That was a really bad move. I need to ask Google to balance my random numbers <laughs> because uh, I've only had four wins on this account. <laughs> All right, so Min Chinese. You know, this pretty much was the most popular opening ever. Just everyone played it. You see that everywhere in pro games. Um, just happened all the time. Okay, so this is interesting because uh, I, would, I am white and I'm actually able to uh, get started on this. It's quite nice, actually, because I'm able to play my opening even as what? Looks like it's going to be a Moyo battle, though. So, uh, let's, see, let's pincer this on the bottom. When your opponent develops a Moyo before you do, it is very important that you invade early because if you leave it till later, you, the, the thing is, you know you have to invade eventually. But if you wait for too long before you invade, then it's gonna be, it's gonna be too late and you know you're gonna invade anyway. So um, you might as well do it early. <clears throat> oh wow, Block is extremely focused in um, in their territory here which is not a big deal for me because I have a big moil as well and I pretty much invaded on the lower side in Sente so in all cases I'm very happy with that result and uh, the reason why if you're wondering about the difference between the micro Chinese and the mini Chinese the the mini Chinese is uh, one below my stone that I played, um, while the uh, micro Chinese is the one that I did. So the main difference here is that Black doesn't have an extension. If the white stone is one space further, then Black would have a very comfortable extension. Now Black can't uh, live very easily, so Black is forced to play less efficient moves. So that's kind of the that's the that's definitely the idea behind why people play the micro Chinese as opposed to the mini Chinese. Hmm. Okay. Looks like we got Sente again, and um, I think we can even just keep this as a as a slow and steady game. Okay, never mind, my opponent invaded. So it looks like we're gonna have to deal with this. Mm, I think I can just extend under. It would be extremely risky if I connected because block can um, extend down. And then I would risk exposing both of my groups um, in danger. But right now, the two stones aren't really worth that much because it's, they're really close to Black's um, influence anyway. So it's it's um, not really heavy. Uh, I don't really care if I lose them. Okay, now... There's a lot of things um, that are relatively big. My lower group is pretty much settled because I can live in one move and I can have a very clear way of escape. So I'm going to invade the left side. After my jump, uh, this move has an attachment. So that means I can always connect back if I need to. Oh, wow. Now, I do have a choice of uh, a relatively more aggressive move. And I'm pretty sure this works. This is there's just so much space um, inside here. If black, wow, black is going to extend. Black is losing so much territory um, this way. So now I'm going to extend back, and then I'm going to connect back to my group. Wow, that is such a comfortable invasion. 
there's absolutely no doubt that uh, white is ahead territory-wise. Huh. Um, I feel like I can... Hmm. I wanted to nuke you this, but since we got such a good profit, I don't think that's necessary. Uh, and I'll just six them. The main reason for why I'm attaching is because block is yeah block is pretty awkward shape, so block's protecting that now, um, which means I can just add an extra move just by jumping in. This is a very important direction, and it's really great that I got another sentry move because why can live um, at any point. Hmm. This is a question that I get asked a lot, but unfortunately there isn't a clear answer to this. It really de depends on the case. Now, the question is, how do you deal with this type of invasions? And really the, <laughs> the short answer is that you kind of just do. Um, there isn't a general way of dealing with them. You just have to read it out, really. Um, every case is different, so you can't really uh, you can't really learn like a general way of, of dealing with things. And as I as 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 I'm speaking, I'm reading out the variations. It seems slightly risky though for me to extend out because there's just so much Aji with the, the stones on the right. So I'm just going to protect whatever I have. So now I have a. 100% guaranteed upper territory. I don't think block can easily cut off my stones in the middle. Um, if block pushes and cuts, I can just jump here. As long as I have a clear route in the middle, uh, I'm going to be happy with that. I think I can just connect. I was refraining from this move because I'm gonna have to play another empty triangle to guarantee my own connection, but I guess it's okay. What I can do is before connecting back, I can actually threaten Black's connection. And that way you'll get me a sente move while these three stones are very important. They're pretty big points, but um, it's always a good habit to get as many sense of moves as you can before being forced to make um, slower moves to connect. So I can actually play another knight's move here because Block still can't push and cut. Okay, my opponent used an overtime. Okay, I'm just going to connect back because I don't think there is really an urgent move left. As long as I guarantee my existing territory, I'm pretty much guaranteed to win anyway. So. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I knew they were looking at something here. Uh... To be honest, I haven't fully read out the sequences yet, but I didn't see anything immediate. In these situations, it's very important that you deal with, that you read very, very carefully. Black has almost no risk. So if Black succeeds, then Black is pretty much guaranteed a victory. You have to be very careful with whatever you do in a situation like this. I have no choice. I have to connect. I have to push. So I play. I played those moves very quickly, and now I'm reading out um, the the variations afterwards. Okay, this is a complicated move. 
I think I can just hone it under. And now the cut doesn't work. The extent inside, white could push up. And black generally doesn't have too many liberties. So this should be fine for white. Yeah, if Bach turns, then I think white could just connect to simplify things. Okay, well, my opponent ran out of time. Um, I think the gist of this game is really how when you play slow and steady, every every move is important. Like if it's in a steady game, you definitely don't want to play a move like this. This hunting connect is way too slow. It doesn't threaten anything immediately. And although it's protecting uh, an invasion inside, it's just generally um, too slow. So that's actually one of the main reasons Black fell behind in this game. All right, so let's uh, roll the next opening. And I don't think I positioned this very well, but um, hopefully you get to see the roll. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And uh, as you know, um, eight is the uh, double for six. And uh, when I open my account, you'll see why. 16 games. And this is the 17th. That means after this game, there's only three more and I have a 70 count. Crazy. Hmm. I had a comment, I think, from um, my last video that when uh, I play these unusual moves um, for, for the first few moves against my opponent to play unusual moves for the rest of the game. And I think that's quite true. Um, it just makes the opponent confused. It's a total... It's totally a decoy, isn't it? Yeah. Now, I think by at 5D, you should definitely know that you shouldn't extend out from both sides of a star point. It's just so inefficient, no matter what Joseki you choose, when white plays the 3-3 invasion. So make sure you don't extend to, the, to both sides. Um, it really makes it inefficient when your opponent invades the 3-3 corner. That's why um, typically you see pros defend the corner first and then extend out. Or if you already have a side extension, you want to definitely defend the corner before you do anything else. Hmm, this is interesting. I'm going to play, okay, I was going to say I'm going to play very aggressively, but I feel like I got stopped in my tracks. I thought black was going to cut me on the left side. Uh, <laughs> it's not the first time that I read the ladder wrong, but I'm pretty sure I got that one correct. I, I did, right? Yeah, I did. Okay. <laughs> Is this game going to end this way? Um, we have a very stubborn opponent. <laughs> I'm going to capture anyway because it black has four signals on the top. It's basically equivalent to playing a move over there. Uh, okay. Not really sure what to say, but we'll just finish this game quickly, I guess. <laughs> Very interesting, though. It's 
so hard to it's it's hard for me to believe that five dans are are like this. Um, I don't know why. It just seems like some of, a lot of the things are like so basic that um, it's hard to believe that a five D player uh, makes these mistakes. I don't know. Let's we'll just we'll just connect to make things simpler. I mean, that's a ladder. That's something that you learn um, after capturing techniques. So I did run into a bit of trouble here, but I am was able to resolve it, because now when I descend, it's sente because the attachment kills the four stone. When you get yourself into sort of stickier situations and you Looks like there might be something. Always look for, yeah. You pretty much always have to read your way out. Um, there's just no way around. That is a tiny screen for for the rematch. <laughs> Never seen that before. Okay, but we're not gonna do the rematch. We're 17 games now on the double four six. So I think if things work out, that's pretty much set for the first account to 70. I hope you're excited. All right, so five is the go second opening. It seems that so far in this series, the accounts that I thought that I would have the most issues with, um, I, I, I end up being okay. We're overcoming our fears <laughs> in this series. Wow. Um, okay, I'm not going to keep jumping with them. Maybe I'll just... Continue playing the opening. It's actually a good counter strat uh, against my Tengen Stone. <laughs> the, the unorthodox opening has, has a few weaknesses, and it's that that's Tengen Stone is very hard to use. I think I'm men I've been mentioning this quite a lot, but a good thing is you you have all ladders. <laughs> If that if that means anything to you, <laughs> you pretty much have every single ladder that you care about. Okay, so we're gonna play out this double approach, Joseki. Huh. So block ignored us again. Um This is actually a little bit tricky to answer. Okay, maybe I'll just extend. I was going to jump, but I realized that if black gets this move, it will it will make it will prevent the cut in Sente. And I definitely don't want that. This is a very good move. Protect the cut. I think the knight's move is a little bit more balanced. If black plays the knight's move, black is going to be separating my, my tank and stone off as well. 
Um, <clears throat> okay, I didn't I didn't really want that, so I decided to play more safe, and I'm just gonna give block the tiger's mouth here, even though that is indeed very comfortable. Okay, this seems like an overplay though, but let's see how we can punish it. Let's make a jump here to see if Block wants the stone on the second line. I just realized that now the quick play is 20 seconds. It used to be 30. If I hunt it here, what is, what is Block trying to do? Oh, Block is going to tie his Huh. Okay, that was a very bad exchange on my part. But that's okay. I'm just going to capture this stone. It's okay because uh, my main goal is to live the group and getting this diagonal will prevent Block from being able to live. Um, which means Block will have a very heavy group here. I do have to make sure my, my center group is relatively safe. Let's keep pressuring black a little bit more. Okay. Black is playing a lot of sentry moves, and that's a generally a good strategy when you're in a fight. Okay, so it looks like Black is ignoring us. We're going to continue what we started here. This seems like a very severe move because now when White cuts here. Okay. Uh, Black just sacrificed the five stones. I'm pretty happy with that. Kill out the five stones. In general, though, we have a lot of territory. I, th I only see one real territory for black, which is the lower part. I don't think this is very hard to invade, though. So I'm going to do some forcing moves first on in the corner to see if we can take advantage of anything. Okay, that's already a pretty good exchange. Now, okay, if I play the large knight, Block is probably gonna jump. Oh no, that's fine. That's fine. I'm gonna play the large knight because I'm not fully committed to the corner. I don't need to. I don't really care that much about the corner so far. So after all those forcing moves, now I can go and set on the side because. I pretty much just got a scenting exchange, so this is actually very flexible for us. And also, if we push, there's another scenting move here. So I think in general our shape is fairly flexible. Okay. Looks like Black is um, cutting us off here. It doesn't feel too hard to sell this group because um, there's another sente move here, and I can always attach. Do I answer that? Um, let's just push through here. <clears throat> that was a really bad move. Okay, why did I wedge? <laughs> okay, now that 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 was really bad because now
If I didn't make that push exchange, my my move here would have been Sente. But because I made that bad exchange, it's no longer Sente. Okay, I'm gonna just honey the middle now. <laughs> wow. I can't believe I I wedged. I should have just connected. That's actually a really good example of a of something um, when you, when you make an exchange, and if you don't guarantee that that's a good exchange, it'll typically come back to bite you in the foot. So you don't want to make unnecessary exchanges if if they're not going to immediately benefit you. That's a really great example of that. I'm going to Hane to see if my opponent blocks. Okay, they're very smart about this. Okay, it looks like there isn't anything we can do here. Okay, so we're going to have to continue our fight in the middle. I'm going to get a Sente move here to threaten to um, cut back off on the bottom. A move like this would definitely help in the future as we continue the center fight. Okay. So we've definitely escaped now because now if Black lets us cut off the five stones at the bottom, well, Black is dead. So now we just push through. And we've escaped this entire dragon. No, we just don't care about those stones anymore. Okay. Very successful invasion. We pretty much pushed all the way. Look at those. Look at that. Block is only left with two second line. So the story of that game really had to be the fight on the bottom. There are definitely uh, mistakes made. This, if I connect in here, then Black would have to connect back. Then when Black, White makes the inner push, Black has to connect in the middle. Otherwise, Black could cut. I hope that makes sense. That <clears throat> explains why my wedge and connect was such a bad mistake. And it could have cost us the game. All right, and if you're wondering about the unorthodox account, we are five games now, so not great, but uh, it's slowly pushing through. Okay, let's play one more game. Um, nice, full circle, we're back to the main Chinese. All right, we actually have uh, Black this time, so that's convenient. Let's try to... Uh, oh no, okay. Well, it happens a lot, so one thing to note for this is that this corner enclosure is actually quite big when your opponent pincers. So if you choose a Joseki here, um, make sure you're aware of that. If black, if white plays a low approach, um, that is a very big move. So because of that, I think it's okay if we just do the three-three invasion. It's a very nice simplification of the Joseki. White has a tiger's mouth. Black connects back and one captures, and then we defend the lower right. Let's just do that. So because it's a two space, um, it's pretty far away from our stone. We don't really have to worry um, about this peeping move here at E18. Okay, so this is pretty casual opening so far. So something you're not supposed to do here is you're not supposed to push an extra time. Even though it doesn't feel like it's going to make a difference, but the fact that 
white is making blacks a lot stronger to begin with um, will definitely make a difference so just be aware of that now because white is really strong here I'm gonna make a low extension I'm not really too keen on making any moils um, but then this move is actually quite slow I wouldn't recommend that in the opening Wow, <laughs> I, I definitely didn't expect the cap here. Okay, so white's keen on attacking us, but because white made that exchange early, the black group is actually pretty strong. It's it's very hard to attack it well. Um, let's make the attachment. Okay, so White's just giving up the uh, corner control. Okay, I want to make the push first, but because now we have a lot of senti moves, I'm, and then I'm going to attach out. That's no problem. The Atari wouldn't do much. Yet. White's shape is generally very poor right now. On the upper side, Block could cut on either side to capture something. When that's the case, it's actually a very good strategy to not cut on either side because let's say exactly here when white protects the cut in the corner still works so white's protection is very inefficient that way okay um i do have two cutting points and both of those are indeed a little bit of a handful. Okay, what? I'm not sure why White suddenly play, played a very protective move. The whole point of this um, Knight's move was to attack, right? I think White um, forgot about that. Um, at this point, when Black protects the middle, White barely gained anything from the attack. Not to mention, there's still a cut in the corner, so Black can still capture the corner and, and at least make an eye. So after this fight, I would say Black is doing extremely well. I'm just going to extend one more. This second line is more important than this start point. Okay, why well, didn't get this anyway? Okay. Um... So white has this weak group, and even though it doesn't seem like it's, um, it doesn't seem obvious how we could benefit from attacking it, immediately we're already getting something. We're making this incredibly strong, so now our lower right is 100% secure. Now I can keep pressuring white, but at that point, since white's shape is already very flexible, already run the danger of not of white tanuki so um, at this point I'm going to stop because uh, the next move might not be a hundred percent sente and at this point they're really just endgame moves because the middle is already settled and we've already established our, our own territories I'm going to push one more. This is a move that reduces white's eye space, actually. Um, I'm just going to make an extension. White's definitely looking at the clamp. Um, this move here prevents that. Okay, I'm just going to make another diagonal. White's already fairly strong. Um, so there isn't anything I can do to attack, but... Why did White push here? <laughs> what? That's a very strange uh, choice for White. And it's very sudden. I, I definitely didn't expect that. That's a, it's, it's a relatively small move in the corner at that point. Um, and I guess, yeah, even... <laughs> okay. Okay, that's a very sudden 
turn of events there. I'm not sure why White just um, <laughs> decided to take the corner uh, very quickly. It's uh, definitely not the right decision. In this game, White uh, pretty much gave up the fight by playing that Tiger Spell. It's 100% necessary for White to Hane or extend now, because White needs to separate this stone and continue the fight. If Block cuts on either side, Block would give up on the other, pretty much. Like if you, if you, if we think if Block cuts here, White connects, the corner is already safe, and now the center fight is still continuing. So the protective move here really gave Black um, a chance to continue in the middle. And after that, uh, the game became pretty much in Black's favor. So in the key points of the fight, if you play, play away, that usually will give your opponent a, a clear advantage. So make sure you continue and fight as much as you can in those moments. Okay, so we came back full circle um, um, to Mini Chinese, and now we're six wins on this account. Let's see what we have for the next episode, and uh, we're back to Kilashi. So, um, this is very interesting because, you know, double four six is going to get to 70, and honestly I can't wait because I think it's going to be all the more interesting to play such a wild opening at that level. So, next episode we're going to start with Kobayashi opening. We'll see you then!